In my American brain, I thought, if you wanted me to do that, you should have just said. The first time I realized there was going to be a problem, my coworker in the UK said to me, hey, can you check if the upstairs window is open? And this was just before we were about to leave the office to go to a meeting. I was new, I was fresh faced, I was young. I mean, I was younger, I like to think I'm still young, but anyway, I was also American and I had no real idea why they cared if the upstairs window was open because there were a few other people still in the office, but I was like, sure thing person above me in seniority, I will go check if the upstairs window is open. So I walked upstairs and I looked at it and it was open. So I walked downstairs and I said, just checked, it's open. And they sort of stared at me and said, did you close it? And I stared back and I said, no. And they stared back even harder and said, could you go back and close it then? And I was like, sure, no problem. Now you're asking me to close the window, so I will go and carry out this instruction, no problem. It was quite a bit later when I realized that they were attempting to communicate with the first ask of, can you check if the window is open, that they wanted me to close the window. In my American brain, I thought, if you wanted me to do that, you should have just said. This is one of the many examples I've accumulated over the years of how Americans often struggle with British indirect communication. Compared to the Brits, Americans are very literal beings. And to a Brit, that can come across as Americans being dumb, but I'm here to assure you that there are many reasons why Americans can be dumb, but this actually isn't one of them. You see, communication is based on culture, and there's a fascinating theory about high context and low context cultures. To be a high context culture, culture means that there's a lot of indirect communication. It requires less explicit and laid out in front of your face communication. It relies on a shared understanding of experiences and hidden meanings, and it's all about subtlety and reading in between the lines. A low context culture, on the other hand, values direct, straight talking communication with little room for hidden meanings. It's a culture that expects you to take things literally when they are communicated and not have to read too far into what someone actually means because they're just gonna tell you. This continuum is a spectrum. Different countries are along the high context and low context spectrum. It's not just black and white, but the US trends towards the low context end. That is the end that requires direct communication. And the UK trends towards the high context end, allowing for a lot of implicit meaning. And it has nothing to do with intellect. Think about the histories and the makeup of the two countries themselves. I go to buildings in the UK all the time that are hundreds of years older than the US even is as a country. And while the UK is certainly changing over time in the makeup of its citizens, its history is that of homogeny, i.e. a lot of people with shared backgrounds and understandings and a lot of history to back all of this up. This kind of history creates a high context culture where subtleness can thrive. Compare this to the US, which is genuinely founded on being the land of immigrants, of people coming from a lot of different places and with a much shorter history as a country, and you've got yourself the perfect makings of a low context culture. We rely on direct communication in the US with little hidden meaning because this is the most effective way to communicate between people from different backgrounds and with different shared histories and sometimes in the beginning even different languages. Here's an example. A study had UK and US respondents talk about their perceptions of a statement to see what they thought it meant. The first statement was the phrase, that's an interesting idea. Three in four Americans believed this meant that their idea is impressive because that is what that statement is directly communicating. That is an interesting idea. So I think you're saying that my idea is interesting. Compare that with the UK respondents, one out of three of them actually felt there was hidden meaning there, that you were saying actually their idea was not good. There are entire charts online to help people who move to the UK figure out what in the world British people are actually saying. The same charts don't exist for people moving to America because we don't need a chart. We're just going to tell you. Americans will typically say if we don't like something or if we do. Obviously, there's a ton of nuance here when it comes down to region and personality. Typically, the East Coast in America tends to be more direct than the West Coast, for example. And there are classic examples of hidden meanings in America as well. A very famous one is a statement in the South where you say, bless their heart. This can mean that you think fondly of the person and would like to bless their heart, but it can also mean you think the person is the stupidest person you've ever met. Um, and you do need some tonal cues to figure out which one is which, 
But on the whole, in the US, we like to get to the point. If we think you're great, we'll tell you, and not in a sort of hidden coded language way, but in a, hey man, I think you're awesome and doing a great job kind of way. It's direct and doesn't leave room for confusion over whether someone is telling you you're doing a great job, but actually thinks you're terrible. Similar with directions. If we want you to close the window, we'll say, hey, can you close the window? And this is the communication style I was used to, hence my confusion and my first anecdote. However, the confusion usually only comes in for foreign visitors or new arrivals in the UK. A high context culture like the UK isn't confusing to those that are raised and exist within it because they are raised to understand these hidden meanings and to talk this way. And in fact, the indirectness in the UK is sort of seen as part of the British charm. It reflects a value within the country of sort of downplaying things and having what is almost seen as good manners. In the US, it's not considered bad manners to be direct because we value that direct communication highly as part of our culture. Again, it's one of those things where we're not saying either country is wrong or smarter or any number of judgments. We're just exploring why things are the way they are. The types of communications used work well within both countries. You just get into a bit of trouble when they get mixed. I do question the number of times someone has told me something is quite good in the UK and I celebrated because in the US that would mean it was really good or at least pretty good. In the UK, it can mean that was average or that was not good at all. And you have to use a combination of body language and tone to figure it out. Now, again, like I talked about, this low context and high context scale, it's a spectrum. And compared to some other cultures, the UK can be considered a low context culture. There is still a degree of directness that is in UK communication that isn't in some other countries that require even more use of body language and implicit understanding. But the UK is a much higher context culture than the US, and that's what we're comparing in this video. Other higher context cultures than the UK, aka ones that have even more hidden meanings, are places like Japan, China, much of Africa, as well as some other European countries like France. In addition to the US on the low context end of the spectrum, we have places like Canada, Switzerland, and Germany. Other examples of this indirect style of communication in the UK that I found, some of which are pretty funny, are Number one, when Brits say it's not quite what we expected. What they mean is this is an absolute disaster bearing zero relation to what we need and we are incredulous as to how you would even think this is appropriate. Americans would take the phrase, it's not quite what we expected, and believe that means they just need a little bit more work until it is what you expect. It also goes for invitations. So if you bump into an American and you haven't seen them in a long time, and at the end you say, we should get together soon, an American is going to believe that invitation is actually coming. This is direct communication. You say we should get together soon, you mean it, they're going to reach out and arrange it. Often in the UK, this is just a throwaway phrase to end a conversation or a situation and you both know that you're not gonna be getting together anytime soon. It goes unsaid, it's a shared understanding that you're not actually saying what you're meaning. Other examples are someone saying to each their own. This does not mean to each their own. Sometimes in the UK, it can mean you're wrong, but never mind. An American would listen to this and be like, yeah, that's a nice statement. Everybody gets their own opinion to each their own. They're not necessarily going to read into the negative connotation of a statement like that. What about if someone says in the UK, I'm just popping out for lunch, does anyone want anything? This is not an actual question. This is a statement that means I'm getting my lunch, please remain silent. Or if someone in the UK says, that conference was rather disorganized. An American would probably take this as, it was a little bit disorganized because an American would say that conference was absolute chaos, which is probably what a Brit would be meaning by that statement. They've just toned it way down and used a sort of indirect language to describe what is happening. And a classic one in the UK workforce, someone might say, just whenever you get a minute. This is hugely difficult for people used to direct communication to understand. Typically, this is a British indirect way of saying, do this now. But if it's taken at face value, it means this is actually of lesser importance than what you might be working on right now. So when you get a minute, even if it's not now, can you eventually get around to this task? 
As an American who moved to the UK, I struggled so much with this one. If they wanted me to do this now, why couldn't they just say do this now? Now that brings me to the end of this video. Thanks very much for watching. If you're British, leave your comments below on what you might say versus what you might actually mean in different situations. I'd love to hear your examples, but I hope this video kind of explains a little bit for people on both sides of the pond about how and why we communicate the way we do. I'm not sure I will ever fully get used to British communication styles because I've been here 10 years and sometimes I'm still confused, but I'm getting better. Don't worry. I'm, I'm slowly learning. Um, but now you'll know. Now you'll know why Americans seem to take things very literally and British people seem to hide meanings in every aspect of their communication. It's just the way we were raised and the way we communicate in each country. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.